shall I remind you of what wudu used to be before these 119 years? The Prophet ﷺ was passing by and saw a man performing wudu and he was using too much water. The Prophet ﷺ asked why is there this israf, waste of water. The man asked, O Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, is there such a thing as waste, overconsumption of water in wudu? Yes, said the Prophet ﷺ. Do not exceed the limit. This is more than the limit. I don't use this much of water in my wudu. The limit is a mud of water. He said, even if you have a running stream of water in front of you, no shortage of water, do not exceed the limit. Now, how did he perform wudu? He would lift the container of water with the left hand. Where is that today? It's in a place called cold storage. Nobody lifts a container anymore except in Kampung. Because you now have running water, the price of progress. So the water now flows. And he will pour water on the right hand. That is a part of wudu, the sunnah. And then he would take the right hand and dip and take water out to make every act of wudu. And at the end of the wudu, if there was any water left in the container, he would drink it. But his companions would also be eager if they could get that water to rub it on their skin, rub it in their hands and faces and so on. How important it is that we should perform that wudu? I'll tell you how important. The main purpose of life, which if it is not achieved when we go down in the grave, how sad will be our fate. The main purpose of life is to get noor from Allah, noor from Allah, noor from Allah. Noor is not sold in the stock market. Universities cannot deliver noor. Only Allah gives noor. Allah gives noor to whomsoever Allah chooses. But that noor comes from the arsh. And so we must travel up to the arsh for the noor. How do we travel? The Prophet said, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, he said, As salatu mi'rajul mu'min. The travel is accomplished through salat. Did he not say that? That it is with salat that you can travel. Travel, of course, is ultimately to the arsh. But travel begins with water. Travel begins with water and travel ends with water. Because Allah says, وَكَانَ أَرْشُهُ عَلَى الْمَا That Allah's arsh is on water. So you begin with water, with your wudu. And you end with water at the arsh. 
And so the water acts as a conduit to help us to reach the arch. Al wudu miftahu salat. If you do not perform your, do, your wudu correctly, it will not act as a key with which to open salat. When you perform your wudu correctly, then when you perform salat, you begin with Surah Al Fatiha. And he said, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, about Surah Al Fatiha that in it there is a cure for every illness. Perhaps even for the madness in Washington as well. In order for that cure to take place, Allah is a Shafi, the one who cures. So Surah Al-Kaf has to reach the Arsh. Between here and the Arsh there are seven Samawat. Is it not seven? And Surah Al-Fatiha comprises Sab'an min al-Mathani, seven ayat. This is seven and that is seven. So obviously, there's a link between the two. That every verse of Surah Al-Fatiha takes you to a sama. And as you're reciting Surah Al-Fatiha, you have in your heart the feeling that I am ascending, I'm going up. That is the best psychology. We have a professor of psychology here tonight. The best psychology to get your mind off. What am I going to cook for dinner tonight? While you are performing Salat. <laughs> so that the mind can focus and concentrate. As you recite the verses of Surah Al-Fatiha, you are ascending to the Arsh. And when you say Ameen, you've reached the Arsh, psychologically. And then you recite from the Quran in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Arsh. And then you bow down and praise him as he ought to be praised. And then you prostrate and you praise him as he ought to be praised. And then you repeat it a second time. And then at the end of it all, before you offer the salams, you recite a tahiyyat. What is a tahiyyat? When the Prophet والسلام, reached the Arsh in the Mi'raj, he addressed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with these words, at tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyiban. And then Allah responded to him, Assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakat. And then the Prophet والسلام, replied, Assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin. So this is the conversation that took place there. And this is what we recite in Salat. If we do this, then it is accepted because sometimes we perform Salat and Allah throws the Salat back in our faces. You know, you recite Salat like a chicken. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Like a chicken? No. You must take your time. If we do that, then what is the gift that awaits us? It's nur. A companion asks the Prophet, O Messenger of Allah, you know us. You can recognize us on Judgment Day. But how will you recognize all those who are to come that you've never seen? He said, if there is a big field with large numbers of black horses, and there are some with white stripes upon them, would it not be easy? 
to recognize the horses with the white stripes? They said, yes, O Messenger of Allah. He said, that's how I will recognize my followers on Judgment Day. For every spot touched by the water of wudu will gleam with light on Judgment Day. Every spot touched by the water of wudu will gleam with light, nur on Judgment Day. And the angels, and this hadith is in Sahih Bukhari, the angels will address these people with the words, Ya Ghurl al Muhajjaleen, O oh, shining ones, O oh, glittering ones. Noor is of paramount importance. For on Judgment Day, there are three critical moments each one of us will have to face. Number one, we will be put upon a scale to be weighed. And in this world, you may weigh quite heavy. But on that day, you may weigh less than a housefly. And then we'll be subjected to the second test when we'll be handed our book, Ikra Kitabah. Read your book. If the book is handed on the right hand, Alhamdulillah. But if the book is handed on the left hand or behind our back, that's just too bad. But then there'll be a third critical moment when we are told to walk across a bridge. Across the bridge is Jannah. Underneath the bridge is Jahannam, the fire of hell. The bridge is narrow and the place is pitch dark. For those with no noor, if you put your hand in front of your face, you can't even see your hand. That's how dark it will be. The only way we can cross that bridge on Judgment Day is if we have noor. For some, said the Prophet والسلام, the Noor will be so much that they can see all the way from Medina to Yemen. For others, it will be so little, they can only see one step at a time. So if we leave this world without Noor, that is a calamity. Shall I introduce you to the new wudu that has now replaced the one that came from the Prophet Go to any masjid where wudu is being performed, but take a handkerchief with you to wipe your tears when you see them performing wudu. Now you simply open the tap. I used to say, and I used to do it myself, but now I hate it. I would open the tap, fill my hand and close the tap. And people would look at me and say, where has he come from, Mars or Venus? What a strange man is it. He opens the tap, he fills his hand, he closes it. He opens it, he closes it. He opens it, he closes it. What a strange man is this Imran Hussein. They open the tap and the water flows. They are washing their hands and the water is flowing. They're making masa, wiping their heads and the water is flowing. And at the end of all, end of it all, if you collect all of that water, you could probably fill this 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, sometimes 50 times. I ask you, is that wudu valid? Will it open the key? Will it function as a key for salat? 
I learned something from the Sufi Sheikh who died recently. And when I learn something from a man, I want to mention his name and honor and respect him, Sheikh Nazim of the Naqshbandi Sufi order, who just recently died. One of his disciples said to me, and when I heard it, it was like music in my ears. Said, the Sheikh said, recite Surat al-Fatiha and blow on the water before you perform your wudu. And from the time I heard that, I have been doing it. So I dislike this tap now, I dislike it. And if I recite Surat al of course this is not obligatory, this is if you wish to do it. If you recite Surat al-Fatiha over the wudu, you will now have a bond with that water. This is the water that has to take me up to that water. This is what the world of Islam was like a hundred years ago. And this is what it is today. Calamitous change. Mysterious change.